Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> so I thought I'd bring you a colour with me in Layla Dooley's Walk in the Woods, this incredible book. And you've probably guessed from when I did my haul and flip through what picture it is we're going to do. And I chose the little wood mouse. So I'm going to have to bring you in um, so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to be using the Polychromos today. Um, all the Polychromos apart from one very trusted white Prisma. Um, so let's come in and we can have a look. So the first thing I want to do is try and get these leaves sorted out. Um, I've never been really amazing at leaves and so they're a bit of a nemesis so we're going to have a go at doing them. I've got a lot of colours here by the side of me. Um, they will be up on the screen um, and I'll let you know what colours I'm using as I use them as well. So I'm going to go in with the really bright <laughs> uh, grass green to start with and I want to keep that centre bit bright. I want that to show up. So I'm going to do one side at a time and um, we'll take it from there. Just section them out one bit at a time. Yeah, like I say, and then we'll take it from there. So I thought I'd use Polly's because I've been using my Prismas in the members group on Romantic Country 2 and um, I'm going to have none left. <laughs> we're doing, we're going great guns over there. Two pages, I'm currently working on the third. I'm now going to go in with May Green and um, I'm just going to go straight over that as well. Um, yeah, so we're currently working on, um, well I'm currently working on the third. We do um, a page a week, we've got a Facebook group which is amazing, it's so much fun, everybody's so lovely over there. Um, so if you haven't, come and join us. Um, it would be it would be a real pleasure to have you there. Okay, May Green. Now I'm going to go in with um, Earth Green. And we're going to just, I'm just layering these colours up. Because there's not, there wasn't one in particular that met the colour that I wanted. So I'm just going to build the colour up. And I know somebody had said in the comments, please do a picture where you're layering. Um, well, this is probably going to be it. So, I'm concentrating folks, can you tell? <laughs> okay, so that's earth green. Now we're going to go in and we're going to start to get a little darker with... Um, chromium green opaque and I'm just going to bring this out um, in sort of uneven streaks shall we say let's let's call it that uneven streaks darker round here at the um, vein in the center and then I'm just going to bring that out and obviously we're going to go back over this but um, I'm going to layer them up as per the request. So it's been, yeah, it's been busy and amazing. And I want to thank all my members and all the new people that have joined. It's just been a whirlwind. I never, ever thought that, um, that we would have such an amazing group. So thank you to all of you for supporting me and, you know, just always being behind me in my little adventures and and ramblings. Okay, so to that we are going to add, I'm just trying to think which colour to go into go in with next. I think we're gonna add um, a little bit of <coughs> nugget and I'm gonna put just this will be random on each leaf but I shall use the same colours but just place do the placements slightly differently. So um a little bit of nugget there, let's have a little bit of nugget there, a little bit up there, at the tip here. Like that. 
and then um, we'll do some yellow ochre beautiful colour, love yellow ochre put that in and that will change those greens yet again Bit of yellow ochre, right now. Um, a bit of Venetian red over that, um, over those tips. Let's just have a little bit of red going on in there, and then we'll come back to our greens. So, a bit of Venetian red, and this is just going to help with variety and just making it look a little bit more fluid and real rather than just flat on our page okay Venetian red don't overdo it otherwise we're going to end up looking like we've got an autumn page so I'm now going to go back through my colours and I've got grass green again and I'm going to go through that really lightly over that Venetian red I don't want to knock that back too much and the green will tone that red down so try and avoid that May green. That's coming back again. So we're getting that nice bright green back in there. Okay, just give that a bit of a brush off. And then our chrome green oxide, green even, not green. <laughs> oh dear, that's what going to work does for you in the mornings does not set my brain off well. It's not like having breakfast that's supposed to wake you up and give you energy. No, no, it's the opposite. It's a hindrance to my colouring. <laughs> okay, and we're gonna, now we're gonna take um, chrome oxide green and we are gonna bring up some of those veins. Like that. There we go, and we'll have a little bit over here, just a tad. That's probably about as much realism as I'm going to get. <laughs> um, and then just to lift all that um, and give it back the light where I want it. I've got light chrome yellow and I'm just going to pop that in in between where we put that dark green. And I'll just lift that yellow. And then I'm going to go back in with our darkest green which is the um, chrome oxide green. Put those flicks back in. They should be even more notice noticeable now we've put that yellow in. I mean it depends on how much you want to faff around. You could spend hours doing this but um, I don't think it's necessary really. And I'm just going to take, I haven't got it out, I'm just thinking I'm going to take a bit of Payne's Grey and I'm just going to put that in just to further deepen up that green just in those um, vein areas crazy dogs out to play he's still vocal four years on of doing YouTube which is my birthday it was my YouTube birthday the other day um, he's still he's still just as vocal he still likes to come out and say hello to you and going back to our darkest chrome oxide green there we go and that Payne's grey just really makes a difference really gives us that dark which is sort of what I wanted that sort of those stark colours and then um, let's see about the middle what did we put in there a bit of may green Pressing too hard. Okay. 
All right, let's do the other side. So I'm not going to do that as, as dark this side. So I'm going to put in um, the grass green. Like that. And then we, once you've got the colours, you can just kind of make it up as you go along, really. So we'll go in with a May green. And I'm going to try and follow those um, the little ridges in the leaf. I don't know what they're called. What they the veins in the leaf? Yeah, that's what they're called, Lucy. Deepen it up round there a bit. Okay. Then we're going with our earth green. So you've got the colours, so it's just literally playing with the order, um, not the order, well, you can if you want, but it's just um, playing with the placement of them, really. Or you could do them all the same. Okay, uh, we're going to go in with our chrome green opaque, which is our lighter one. Do you want some colour on it? But maybe I'll just leave out the... Um, I don't know, we'll see. Let's leave out... Maybe leave out the um, browns and reds. So we're going to our very dark green now, which is the... Um, Chrome Oxide Green. I've forgotten all the names. It's been so long since I've got the Polychromos out. Or it feels like it anyway. This book just seemed the perfect opportunity to get them out. Because uh -huh, the paper's so smooth. But I do think, working on it, that the Prismas would work beautifully too. I think most pencils would. It's a really beautiful book. So I'm just going to bring those veins out. Right, we did the other side. Okay, and then let's go back in with, let's see. Let's go back in with a little bit of earth green. And let's put that in. We might have to put some yellows and things in, because otherwise it might look a little bit like we've not finished colouring it. <laughs> Sip of tea time. Yeah, this page was just immediate. It just jumped out straight away at me. Let's put a little bit of light yellow ochre just at the tips here. I don't want it to look so different from that one, but I just wanted it, this side to be lighter. So a bit of light yellow ochre. And then what we'll do is take the Venetian red and we'll just put a tiny bit in the, in the tips over there like that. Some of them like that. There. And then step back and leave alone. <laughs> Isn't that cool? All right, now for the branch, they've got like a very soft green and um, pink on them, actually. I've got, a, I've got a picture that I've Googled. I've just Googled it and put it in. Where is that? Not that one. I've got like 500 of them. Um, and there's pink on the actual branches. So I'm going to go in with the beautiful earth green and just lightly put that in. And then we'll lighten that up with a little bit of the grass green. And that earth green will just stop the grass be green being t just too bright. And go back in with the earth green, sorry. And then I'm going to take, shock factor, rose carmine. And I'm going to put them, I'm just going to start to... I'm just going to pop, plop that in, okay? 
don't be afraid to use it because it looks so cool getting those little thorns and just sort of bring it out all right how about that and then what I might do is faff around and spoil it no I'm just going to add a, a little bit of ivory just into that green and then leave it alone I think go back with my earth green and then leave it alone because we just don't need to keep playing and when we've put a lovely sort of soft background in there well I'm not going to do a soft background I'm going to do a dark background so all this pops out that's going to look incredible. Shall we do our little mouse and then I'll come back and do another leaf with you before I go off and plant our berries because we've got the, obviously the brambles, so blackberries, but these are elder and we look when I looked them up they are like, um, let me just get the picture back up, oh gosh I've got like nine million of them, they are like so purple they're almost black. So that will be good fun to do, but they'll be easier than the rest of it. Um, so yeah, let's do Little Mousy. So again, I've got an array of pencils and I don't want to read them all out to start with because it's just going to, um, well, there's so many of them, but they will be on the screen and I'll read them out as we go again. Okay, so I'm going to take my ivory again and I'm going over the entire Little Mousy to get some um, pencil down and he is a little wood mouse he's the cutest dearest little soul look at him while he's in the picture I, I, I'm not sure that I'd be happy about picking him up or anything like that I'm not a big rodent fan colouring books yes Real life, no. I did have, when I was at school, I had a white rat that I looked after called Munro. Um, and I loved her very much. But I'm, as, you get, as I get older, I get more scared of different things and I'm terrified they're gonna bite me. Because they hurt. Okay. All right, before we go on, um, just get my pitch back up. Let's do a little bit of, let's put a little bit of, um, this is warm grey three. So we're going to start to put a little bit of greys in. So I'm going to go um, all over his nose. And what I'm doing is little tiny, because mice do not have long fluffy hair, little tiny backwards and forward strokes. Almost like I'm, um, I'm doing a controlled scribble, folks. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to call it. So I'm just doing backwards and forwards. Um, and I'm going to do this all over, even on his ears. And then we're going to we'll build up these colours. I'm just putting these different colours down. Will really help to to sort of give us some realism to him. Um, because the grey is not going to cover everything the way we're colouring it, so the ivory is going to come through. And that will also um, be the case when we've built up colours too. So, um, and it will just, like, add to that fur. So on his face I've gone up and down that way, and on his body now I'm going to come backwards and forwards this way. So I'm going to swizzle the page a little bit so that we get his fur going in the right direction. And little tiny backwards and forwards controlled scribbles folks, controlled scribbles. We'll get them on his paws, get the grey on the paws. There we go. Um, and we'll just just build up that colour. Already he's got colour coming. I don't know, I hope you can pick up on it. It's very light at the moment. But if you can see, I've got like little patches there that have gone darker. Well that's brilliant. That 
will just add to his fur uh, texture. Okay, and then I'm going to go on his tail too, really lightly. I'll put you back in the centre. Okay, all right, so that's our warm grey three done. Now I'm going to start to add some ready tones in, some gingery tones to him. Not a lot, but just a little bit, just to lift it. So I've got Sanguine, and again, our little backwards and forwards strokes. I'm going to go over his nose for a minute. Backwards and forwards strokes. And let's just put in some areas of... Um, this sort of gingery red colour. Don't just don't fill him up. Um, let's do some down here. Obviously, he's going to be darker under his chin and behind his ears, so we can afford to put a little bit more colour in there. And I've got very sharp pencils, as you can see, to help with what look like stroke marks, hopefully. Um, not stroke marks, fur. Created by stroke marks. Okay. So I don't want ginger all over. I want to build up this colour. At the moment I don't want that red everywhere. So I'm going to sort of pull it out and leave the centre of him maybe a little bit lighter. I don't know, I'm just ad-libbing and seeing. But that's what my thought process is at the moment. Let's leave it like that. We, like I say, we can, keep, we can keep going back in. And then we're going to darken that up with Burnt Sienna. So where I've put now that um, Sanguine, I'm going to go in with the Burnt Sienna. with our little backwards and forwards strokes. And you, what you should see is these different colours poking through. Oops. And don't be afraid just to stop, you know, if you think, um, oh, I don't know if I've put too much down, don't be afraid just to stop and, and back off a bit, you know, and then and choose another colour to put down. Like I say, you can come backwards and forwards, as long as you're not pressing hard, you can come backwards and forwards as much as you like um, and put more colour in there. Put a bit down there. Okay, I'm going to stop there because that's quite dark. Um, we're now going to add some um, brown ochre. Yeah, brown ochre. Now this is much lighter and much more um, sort of orange colour. Uh, yeah, orange colour, maybe yellowy colour. And I'm going to put that on his ear too. And then we'll be going over those. But it will just give us that nice base colour. And then let's start to fill in our little gaps here. And he will eventually, he'll start to come to life. Brown ochre down on his paws, on the nose. And like I say, we're going to go over that, so, but it will just add to the effect, hopefully. So now what I'm doing is filling in all those spaces that we left. And then we'll go back in.
We've got some other darker colours as well, but I don't want to put those on until I've got the lighter ones sorted. Mmm, cold tea. <laughs> do you do that when you're colouring? I'm always drinking cold tea. I make a cup of tea when I'm colouring, I get engrossed, forget I've got hot tea and yeah, end up drinking it cold. Okay, and we're going to come down. I know it looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but it won't. We'll, we'll get it there. Come down his tail. So, okay, so our little mouse at the moment is looking very red. So we want to tone that down. So I'm going to take, I'm going to go back to our warm grey three and we're going to start to put that in. I know we've already used it, but we're going to put it back in. have to just there we go it's a very big book <coughs> so I'm going to build up this um, area that's going to be darker now they do have little white tummies and things but we can't see it under here. We can make it lighter, but we can't see it under here the way he's drawn. And we're not going to see it here because his little belly is on the branch. So, which makes it easier for us. So, just pulling in this grey. Again, that will tone down that ginger. Okay, I'm going to go back in with cream, oh, ivory sorry, I do apologise, ivory, blend this through, and I'm going to make sure I stay going in the same direction. that's knocked back some of those thicker um, pencil strokes there okay now we can take a look where do we want it where do we want what do we want now so I want some more brown he needs to be more brown than red so I've got burnt umber which is quite dark but that's good we're going to put that in where um, the darkest of him would be so around his ear roll Definitely around his little eyes. Pull that out around his eye. And that brown now in there, I'm hoping, she says, will start to change him, his look from red to brown. So we're going to have some behind his ear here. I don't know why all my critters are he. I think I've had this discussion with you before, haven't I? I think it's because all my family members are male. I have two boys. I've got a grandson. Um, so they're all boys. So I'm hoping the new baby, that um, the new little person in our family will be a pink one. I'd like a pink one. So I'm not the only one, other than my daughter-in-law, obviously. Um, but my whole life grow, uh, raising my family has been boys and blue ones. Okay, so I'm just going to try and define this little area here as his back leg. So let's bring that round a bit like that. Okay. And we'll have a little bit of dark under here. And here. And then just 
let's just bring some out so just really lightly going in That looks good. That's getting there now. So it just takes lots and lots of colours, doesn't it? Lots of patience. Let's put some of that in his ear. There we go. A bit more. I don't want to overdo it. Oh, the concentration. I don't think I've ever been so quiet on the channel. It's just such a lovely book, though. It's, um, I thought, oh, this, will, I'll, I'll pop on and do this one. It'll be a quick one. No, no. <laughs> Are any of my videos any more uh, quick? No, I spend too much time talking. Ages, ages faffing and colouring. But it's worth it, I think. It's worth it. I love spending time with you guys. I love listening to your, uh, reading your comments. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so we've got that. Let's now add some darker grey. Let's add grey, warm grey five. We're going to go around his eye again. I'm going to deepen that up. And around that bit of his head. I can even put some in that ear on before we go in with the colours that I've got for his ear. Like that, and pull that in. He's developing, folks, he's getting that. Another sip of cold tea. So it's currently only Tuesday and it already feels like it should be Friday. I wish it was. Got another two weeks of hard slog until the Easter holidays, folks. And then we get Good Friday off. The first day of the school holidays is Good Friday. Um, I'm so looking forward to the break again. Okay, I'm just going to pull that down. Okay, isn't he looking cute? He really is. Right, ear rolls. <laughs> we need to do his ear rolls. So I've got um, cinnamon. So I'm going to go over those greys and the colours we put in with. This is why I put the brown ochre on there. And on the nose. Cinnamon on the nose. And in the ear. like that and then um, beige red or pale flesh whichever set you've got there we go a bit of beige red put that in there too oh and the paws now oh, I forgot those so we're going to have to go back in with our Cinnamon. Let's get the cinnamon. And we will put a bit of pink in too, I think. Not too much, but just a little bit more pink. There we go. Oh, and the tail. We're going to do the tail with these colours too. So cinnamon. And I'm going to use that more, sort of fill up three quarters of his tail with the cinnamon. And can you see the difference in colour? If we'd have put um, cinnamon straight down on the tail, that would have been very, very pink. But here we're getting more of that mouse tone. I don't know what else to say. Uh, a more 
dulled down version, I suppose. Okay, then we're going to go in with light flash, same as we've done the rest, and then we're going to add some pink. So all these layers do make a difference, folks. They really do. Oh. Again, my fault. Okay. Let's brush them off. Right, and we're going to use that rose carmine that we're using on the branches. And I'm just going to put that in very sparingly at the base of his tail. But that will give it more of a pink hue instead of... You know, like when we do matchstick mouse or something like that, I like to do the tails pink. But this will give it more of a, a real vibe. There we go, a bit on the tail, a bit on the paws. Definitely bring some out on his nose. Up in the ear. Put that in the darkest spots. And we get more of a flesh flesh tone than we than pink. Okay, and back in, because I've gone heavy handed over here. So we'll just go back in with the light flash or the beige red just to tone that back down. And if it if you have gone too heavy handed, just get that um, brown ochre back out and it'll It will knock that back down as well. Like there. I'm just going to take a little bit more of that brown ochre. And it will just knock that pink back. Just a little bit. Alright. Okay. So... When you're kind of happy with the colours you've got, which I think I am now, I'm going to add some black. I know it's scary, but I'm going to go round his eye and make sure I've got that nice and deep. We can always put the white back in. There we go. And I'm going to go round the eye as well. that out a bit and I'll go back in with some um, burnt umber okay and then um, let's knock that I want to knock that back a little bit so I'm going to go in with my white prisma I've been too heavy handed Back with my black. There we go. Might put a little bit in here because that's where he's darkest. And then definitely around here. down there and round his um, little butt put some of that in and then we should really be able to see if we want if we want some um, more dark in on him or not now I think his face now I want some more red So I'm going to go back in with, let's go back in with the darker of the two, the burnt sienna. Let's put some burnt sienna in. That would be great transition from our little nose there. OK. 
okay. Just go over that black with the burnt sienna. What do you think folks? And then a little bit more of the brown ochre. So I'm just um, adjusting it as we as we go. I'm going to try and keep that light in that centre bit. Need a bit more of the burnt sienna down here. Over that black there. And that will be the biggest part of our page. Obviously, he's the focal point, so I need to get it right. Like that. Okay, give him a brush off. Let me see. Okay, I'm going to put some white on his tail. Some Prisma. I love how the Prismas and the Polychromos play together. I think they make an awesome combination. But I know not everybody has both sets and it's difficult if you're trying to follow along. So I'm just sticking to one set at a time. I do like to mix them up when I'm colouring off camera. And there, I think we can put some white streaks in. Just some gentle... I think we're almost done. What do you think to him, folks? I think he's very cute. Very cute. But I can't leave alone, so I might put, actually, a little bit of the um, beige red just really lightly. Yeah, that works really well. Look at that. Put that on his, on his face. That works really well. A little bit of beige red on him. For blending purposes, folks. Blending. Right, and breathe, Lucy, and breathe. Okay, should we do another leaf together? And then um, I will go off and colour a million leaves and then we'll come back and meet. Okay, why did I do that? <coughs> Posca. Let's put the white of his eye back in and a little tiny, there we go. Um, leaves. Okay, let's go in with our grass green. Which one should we do? Um, let's do this one. Grass green. I think you all got it. I think you, you know, once you've got the colours, you'll be fine. You can do it. Glass green. Bit of May green. Now, as I keep telling you, my rule of thumb is, is anybody shouting at the screen? If it's underneath or behind, we're going to make it darker. This one's underneath this leaf. And in front of that one. Um, so when we come to do our darkest bits we're going to make that really dark under there. So our Payne's Grey will go under there. Ok 
can you see? I'm try really trying really hard to keep my hand out of the way. I know of late, that when I'm looking at editing my some of my videos, my hand's been a real problem, it's been in the way. And that's because I hold, because of pain, I hold my pencils like that when I'm not on camera. But um, I know it's a real pain. So that was grass green, earth green, may green. So I'm just going back in with our may green. And so because this is the underside here, I'm going to make this a little darker than that side, just because. <laughs> okay, so I'm going in with chromium green opaque. I'm going to leave that centre light again, that centre vein. And we're going to bring this out in random strokes, if you remember, like we did the last one. So it's not uniform. Okay, and we are going to do this one at the same time. Just to save time. I, I imagine I've been yakking for quite some time because my camera battery has run down a notch and it doesn't normally do that. So... Yep, so just randomly drop that in. Then we're going to place our um, nugget. So let's now remember this is just for effect on the leaf. This is not for shadow. The nugget, the Payne's grey, and the darker greens that will be for shadow. This will just be for effect. So where should we drop some? Let's drop some over here. So a little bit of nugget in there, and obviously at the tip, I'm going to put it on the tip. Because I think it looks cool. <laughs> like that. Okay. Then um, our light yellow ochre. Bringing that in. We got light yellow ochre and then our Venetian red. So, where we've put that, we're going to put some Venetian red in. I just think it looks really cool. Like, I don't know. For me, anyway, it looks really cool. Instead of just doing my usual flat leaves. Like I said, a f uh, at the beginning of the year, I said I really wanted to push my colour in. It had felt like it was stagnant and I wasn't moving forward. So I'm trying to really push myself to do things that I hadn't done before. And I'm really enjoying it. Um, I'm still practising. I'm still um, photocopying. This is Sorry, this is our darkest. Um, chrome oxide green. I'm still practicing, I'm still photocopying pages before I colour them um, and I think I probably always will. <laughs> I'm going to bring that out because it just doesn't make sense to me to have such a lovely book like this and just pile straight in and then um, not like it. So it just doesn't seem to compute in my head that that's ever going to be okay. Um, but I'm doing less of it, if that makes sense. Like, I practiced just laying down the colours of the mouse, like, really lightly, as you can see. Did one leaf and then came away. So, whereas before, I'd probably coloured the whole picture before I brought you a video. Um, and that is not long-term conducive when I'm doing membership. And, you know, I just got to trust myself a little bit more. I know you guys do, but I have to <laughs> learn to let go, you know. All right, so we've got that nice dark bit. So what I was saying earlier when we were doing this, this is the light chrome yellow, is just play with the placement. And the more you play with the placement, the realer the page is going to look because um, it's not going to be so uniform. So 
So I'm going to streak a little bit more of that Venetian red in. Like that. And these can afford to be lighter because this part of the page here is lighter. There's less, it's less dense there. So when I do the background, I'm going to do it really, really dark and we'll get lighter as we come towards our little mouse fella. Um, so just putting that yellow in. So it makes sense to keep these ones lighter than those ones. To me, anyway. I might have got it completely wrong, but to me it does. I'm just going to go back in that centre with the grass green. Like that. And the earth green. might just put a little bit of may green too so I'm just see, just playing until it looks and feels right so I'm going to take my Payne's grey now and I'm going to deepen up from that central vein that dark green I hope this is all making sense and it's not um, you're not watching and thinking what are you talking about Lisa I hope not if you are, there's not much I can do about it now, but... <laughs> so, Joanna has a new book coming in October. Um, I can't think what it's called. I've got to find it now, I've told you that. Um, let's see. Orders. Because obviously I've ordered it. RJ's got a new book coming this, I've got it coming this week, we've got, um, where is it, uh, oh, brilliant, I can't find it, Kirby Roseanne's, um, I've got so many on pre-order, um, let me find it, you're all probably screaming it at me, Joanna Basford Colouring Books, um, Magical Worlds on the 24th of, August, of October. Magical Worlds. I can't wait for that. I'm so excited. Um, Got to love a bit of Joanna, haven't you? Uh, yeah. And then Kirby next year. 20... Um, is it next year? I think Kirby's next year. I think. Um, Camilla Di Dierico. She has a new one coming. Layla Dooley, the lady that's doing this book, is re-releasing Flora Bunda because it was out of print, but she's doing it in a, um, a combined book with um, The Flower Year. So you will have Flora Bunda and The Flower Year in one book, plus um, images that we haven't had from her before. So that will be awesome. Okay, so it was Payne's Grey. I wonder if, I'm just thinking... Bear with me here. I'm going to put a little bit of Venetian red on that tail. Just looks a bit odd up there behind his bum. It looks a bit disjointed, doesn't he? Okay, a little bit of Venetian red. That's quite cool. That works really well. And up in those ears, I like that. Yeah, that's cool. That's better. I'm going to go over his tail, whatever that is. What is that? It's a leaf. I'm going to just... It looks like it's sticking out too far. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, there we go. So, let's do this one bit before... This branch, brambly branch, before I leave you. Let me get my picture back up. That was looking at as reference picture. Um... There we go. Um, so I'm going to go in with Earth Green. Yeah, and then when you do your leaves, just have fun with them. If you're going to follow along, I'd love to see it. I really would love to see your picture. Um, 
it just oh, it just makes it so worthwhile. I really like I, I genuinely smile, um, and it makes me happy that someone's wanted to colour along with me. Okay, earth green. Let's take oh, what did we take before? I can't remember now. Earth green and May green. Let's try that. I don't want to go too dark here. May green, that looks good. Earth green, May green. A bit of cream at the end, didn't we? I do believe. We can do a bit of darker on the edges. So I just want to try that. I'm going to take the um, oops, uh, chrome oxide green and just try darkening that edge. It will be darker anyway when we put the background in. But just going to put a bit of that chrome green oxide up this edge, just for shadow under him because he is going to cast a shadow under that branch and his little around his little feet okay I'm going to start to go back to being at the bottom so that's chrome green oxide I'm using okay And then back to oops, got my sleeve caught in the caught the pencils. Back to earth green. There we go. And then May green. I want to keep it nice and light. And then let's take our pink rose carmine again. I'm going to add that in. I'm just going to kind of bring it down into sort of random, random areas like that. That way we haven't just got a, a pink line at the top of our branch. I haven't been able to tell you any gossip and stuff because I'm focusing on colouring. I'm telling you what I'm doing. We'll get there, folks. We'll get there. It's just because it's such a beautiful book. I want to get it right. Okay, get that pink in there. There we go. All right, I might, when I've done the rest of the picture, I might want to darken our little mouse up, but I don't know for the minute. Well, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna touch him, I'm gonna leave him alone. Let's put a little bit of rose carmine on his tail again. I'm not gonna be able to leave it alone, am I? I'm gonna have to keep faffing. All right, step away, Lucy, step away. Okay, I am gonna go and play with the leaves, so, um, I have made that one quite dark, even though I said I wasn't going to. But it doesn't matter. Just play with the placement. If you like the look of the leaf, just go with it. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Obviously, if you're more accomplished, you're going to be able to do it better than I have. But anyway, I'm going to go off and do that. And then we'll meet back and we'll do the berries and the elder berries too. And then the background. I'll see you in a second. Okay guys, so I've finished all the leaves and we're ready to do the berries. So I've got one, two, three, four, five colours. Um, I've got, from darkest to lightest, I've got black, I've got magenta, I've got um, cobalt blue, light 
red violet and I've got um, scarlet red so if I bring you in because these are quite teeny I don't want to come in too close okay so if we take the scarlet red and we cover the berries in scarlet red just going lightly to start with and for the little stalks on the top I just went over with the same color that we use the stems just so they sort of blend in and they don't stand out too much so we'll go in like this let's do these two together okay and then let's take some of the cobalt blue and I'm just trying to think let's put this because we'll get a nice purpley hue here let's put that round like that and then we'll do that side too now on some of them we can cover the whole thing and make it nice and deep and purpley but others I want to keep it a little bit red and a little bit purpley blue so this is light red violet and I'm going to go in with that and what we should end up with when I finish putting all the colours over each other is a really dark rich berry and we're going to do those the same okay let's go in with our next colour which is magenta see how that magenta looks completely different to when I go over here where we've got the other colours so that's the point in layering I know somebody was asking what's the point in doing all these different colours over each other. Okay, then we're going to go back to that red, scarlet red. I'm going to go back over that. Just so that our berry is not exactly the same colour. I'm sorry, I'm going to take a little bit of dark indigo. I forgot to give you that as the colour, but it'll be on the screen. So I'm going to put that round there where I want it darker. Okay, and let's go back over now with a little bit of the light red violet. Just knock back that pink a little bit. Okay, maybe a little bit more of the blue. And then let's deepen up our red a little bit. Okay, I'm not going to do them all the same like that. I'm going to change the pattern up, but it will give us um, a little bit more variety. So this is my Artex white gel pen. And if I can get it working, I'm just going to... going to put a couple of white dots in not all over but just some of the spots where the light might be hitting um, okay let's change this up now let's do this one different so let's put cobalt blue on and because we're mixing all these colors up we should be able to get it to look completely different so if we put a light coat of cobalt blue over this side and a little bit darker here where it's underneath this berry I'm going to go in with some black in a minute and then we go in with our red here we can get a really ripe one let's get a nice ripe berry that and then let's go in with our that's black indigo in our darkest areas <coughs> excuse me and then our let's do our light red violet a 
and I'll blue again. Okay, let's go in now with our black. So I'm just going to deepen up in between the each of these little segments on the ripe section. And we can go in on this one with the black. And I'm just really lightly going over it. Just to darken it up even more. And then let's take our magenta. Let's get that really dark in there. Okay, a little bit of red over this side, maybe. Lighten it up. There we go, we've got a nice rich looking berry there. And then we'll take our white. Put some highlights on it. How cool is that? And then we're going to do the same up here, only this time these berries. I'm going to put a little bit of black at the bottom, so where I th or where I think it will be darkest. So let's do a big one. So if we go around here. And we put some black in. Right. Then we're going to go in with our indigo blue. Oh, dark indigo, sorry. Dark indigo. And then we'll go in with our cobalt blue. I want to try and sort of change these up a little bit compared to the raspberries. Um, and then what should we do? Let's just go in with the scarlet red. See what happens. Because these are almost black when you look them up. Um, Maybe not, so maybe we're just going to go in with the colours, so magenta. I'm not really happy with that, I'm going to erase that, don't like it. It's gone like a, I've muddied it up haven't I? But that's okay. We can fix it. It's fixable, thankfully. Yeah, I didn't like that. That's not good. So I want more of the red. So I'm going to sharpen my pencil. Okay, so that is the um, scarlet red. I'm just going to try another one for a minute. I'm going to do scarlet red. Let's make them darker reds than, than the purpley colours. Scarlet red, then what have I got down here? Ooh, okay. Deep scarlet red, well that makes sense. It's going to sharpen the pencil. Deep scarlet red. And I've got um, middle cadmium red. Let's try that. Yeah. Okay, sometimes when you can't get it right, just have to add lib. So maybe. <laughs> um, maybe these will be more red than they will be. Anything else? Let's try, we had the um, rose carmine, let's try that on the top. Rose carmine, I'll put that there. And then for the bottom, let's go in with the, the magenta and darken that up. Okay, that's better. It's not as dark as it's meant to be, but... 
Okay, magenta. And then maybe a little bit of black at the bottom. Okay, and then go back in with our brightest red, which was the scarlet, wasn't it? Let's do that. Okay, I'm happier with that. And then it can have a little... little dot. Okay, so let's do that again. <coughs> so let me try and cover this disastrous one up. This was scarlet red. There we go, it's beginning to cover now. And let's do that one next to it. So a bit of scarlet red. Then we went in with deep scarlet red. This one's going to be darker than this one, so I'm breaking my rule here, but there's not much I can do about it now. Deep scarlet red. It will be fine. Just don't tell anyone. Um, middle carmine red. And then we put a little bit of that pink, didn't we? Uh, rose carmine over the top there. That would just help us to keep that pinker look. Okay, and then, did we do magenta? Yeah, a bit of magenta. Okay, and then the black. I'm not going to get the colours that I wanted on that. Okay. It'll be fine, folks. It'll be fine. Alright. Let's go in and do another one. So, um, scarlet red. Scarlet red. Deep scarlet red. Um, middle carmine red. A little bit of the pink, pink carmine at the top here. I'm just looking for where the page might be clearest to make the berry the lightest point. Then uh, magenta. And then uh, black. So we're not entirely covering it, we're just getting a hint of that darkness. And back in with our lightest, and then we'll give them some there, we're going to cover that up. Maybe it doesn't need two dots, I'll go over that. All right, so if we go off and finish the berries and then we'll meet back up and I've got a plan for the background. So I hope you like it. Sorry that that went a bit awry, but at least we've got it in the, in the end. So yeah, we're going to do the berries, just mix up where I put the light. So like this one, I will probably make the bit dark, a bit lighter down here for those and over this side for these because it's clearer 
There's less leaves there, if that makes sense. Alright folks, I'll see you in a sec. Okay guys, so anyway, I just thought I'd share that little bit of excitement with you. So to do the background, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six colours that we've already used. Predominantly, I'm going to use these. Um, so these are going to be our main colours, which is Nugget, which we used um, in uh, Little Mousy, Light Yellow and May Green. And then we're going to add the Chromium Green Opaque, maybe a little bit of Grass Green if we need to lift things, and the Middle Cadmium Red. So we'll put those to one side for a minute. Let me come in so you can see what I'm doing. So um, obviously we've got these really dark edges and I'm probably just going to stick to that. But um, I also want some... Um, just get, no, we're going to take that dark green as well. Sorry, the chromium green opaque. But I also want... I don't know, I just want to make it blurry like we're using the colours that are in the image. Does that make sense? So that it's not just this bit of plant and then sky or whatever, it's just, we're just going to, like, it's like the brambles carry on. Yeah, you know, it's, I, I can't speak. <laughs> so I'm going to make this bit round our little mousy lighter and then dark around the edges because that just makes sense to me. So I'm going to go in with our May Green and I'm going to pop just little spots of colour in here just really lightly and this paper be careful because don't over sharpen your polys because um, although it's gorgeous quality paper it doesn't like over sharp polychromos just saying then I'm going to take my chromium green opaque and because I want to make the edges darker I'm going in with that so um, the approach is gently, gently, gently and if your pencils are too sharp then just take a scrap piece of paper and take off that sharper edge. I'm just going to bring that down here, in there. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, so RJ Hampson! I've been following him on Instagram and watching his notes um, you know, his updates on this book coming. And I loved Phileas Fogg's um, uh, 80 Days Around the World. Okay, in here I'm just going to add a little bit of nugget over that brown. Um, it's, a, it's an incredible story. And I have had a quick flip, I'll be honest. And I, yeah, there's some, there's one in particular p picture that stands out. Um, and that's the, uh, there is a picture of Mr. Fogarty in his armchair, which um, is the page that separates part one and part two. Okay, I'm going to go up here with light yellow ochre. And I'm, yeah, I'm really excited about that page. And there's also one where he's distracted by a very beautiful lady frog. Um, so just going in with a bit of yellow ochre and we will go back over this I'm just making sure that when I place them it's right so I'm going to put a little bit of this middle cadmium red up in here again lightly lightly I'm just going to take the edge off that pencil really lightly in there might bring a bit of that down here just to give us the impression that you know that they don't just stop here there is more berries and more leaves behind so we'll just plop a little bit of color in a little bit of the red in not too much where those berries are let's pull that out a little bit I'll go over those with some of our dark green, those stalks. Let's leave that like that for now. Okay, go back to our beautiful May green. 
you'll have to excuse my stubby little pencil. I'm going to have to um, reorder some. Now where the green and the red meet, that's probably likely to go brown, but that's fine because we can then use our nugget. But if we're light, we might be able to keep those colours. Okay, so let's add a little bit of yellow ochre into this. Light yellow ochre, sorry. And keep it light. And then we'll be able to layer it up and not lose too much of the colours that we've got. Bit of the yellow over that red. Like that. Yes, yeah, so I had like snagged the paper, which was a real pain in the butt. And I think it's just like my polys were really sharp. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is take the brown, so the nugget, and come up here. Yeah, so I think the polys were, well, I was either really, well, I know I was tired when I was doing it. Um, I was either too heavy handed or I just over sharpened them. So. But I thought they would work better in this book than um, Prismas because the paper's smooth. But I actually think if you, you wanted to know my opinion, that is that the Prismas would probably be amazing in here. So I'm going to go back up here, over here. And I'm just going to play with these colours until they sort of blend and smush in. But like I say, keeping the lightest part of our page around um, our mousy. So I'm going to take the chromium green opaque now and we're going to come in here. Pull that in there. And a bit in there. And we'll go in with our May green. And then we can add colours if we need to. Like I might want to make that even darker up there, but we'll see. So May green. And then our yellow ochre. And because they're all colours that we've used in the page, it shouldn't be it should give us that impression of the plant carrying on, you know, the brambles being thick and carrying on. Sip of tea. And that way we don't just have to have um, a flat colour background, but it's really easy, as long as you're light handed, it's really easy to create. It's just random, random light pockets of colour. Okay, let's go back in with our... Um, Middle cadmium red. Did we have another colour? We did. Um, we had. What colour was that? Venetian red. Now I'm going to stick with the middle cadmium now I've started. We'll put a little bit of that in. use my phone. Okay, and then if we're going to go over that with anything, do the yellow ochre because it will just... Um, turn it more orangey than if we, you know, than anything. And then we can use the yellow ochre then to go back to our May green. have a little bit of the darker green up here, just a little bit, and up here, a little gap in there, and while we're at it I'm just going to take our um, 
chrome oxide green and just put some darker bits in those little stems behind. Not, I don't want to overwhelm it with green there, but just so, just a little bit. There we go. All right. We go back over this with uh, what did it? What is that? Light yellow ochre. And then all those blends will just create all sorts of different tones and hopefully give us that, give me that look that I wanted. So this is um, our chrome oxide green going a bit darker at the edge, like I said. We'll go back to our nugget. can really deepen up that red in there with our nugget and make it really dark. If I'm finding that's too red when we've finished I can go over with brown, um, a darker brown, or I'm um, sorry the green and it will go really dark but I quite like that little um, that little shock of red in there around those berries. Okay so I'm gonna put, um, let's keep blending that out A little bit more of the chrome oxide green and then back in with our may green just to blend that through. There we go. Okay, then down here we'll have a little bit of the red in here. Are you still can you still see? Yeah, thankfully. A little bit of the red in here and maybe down there. Kind of makes sense around those berries, doesn't it? Okay, a bit of brown in there and over that red. Make it dark. There we go. Then we'll come in with our chrome. Oh, sorry, this is chromium green opaque. I don't know why I tried to remember the colours. I put them on the screen. <laughs> I have such a struggle. Okay, chrome green opaque. Makes a lovely colour with that yellow, um, light yellow ochre. And then we'll put... Um, May green in here, like that, and in there. I don't want it that light down there though. And then nugget, if you wanted some deeper, um, deeper greens, you could always use a grey like um, Payne's Grey might be a bit dark but this nugget is working well at just um, deepening it all up okay and then we want we'll have May Green around our little mousey And then to make it more interesting, we'll add our light yellow ochre. And then we can come in with some uh, green, chromium green opaque here. See what I mean? I just can't retain things. It's actually quite embarrassing at times. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go over with our ochre. I 
I'm really liking that. We need some red down here in these little gaps. So we're gonna, I'm going to fill that in. Yeah, I just couldn't get the richness that I wanted um, of, of the berries. And then when I tried to go really dark, I just didn't like it. So um, I know they're meant to be a lot darker than that, but I like the the shock of the red against the green. I think it looks really cool. Um, what are we doing now then? So we want some we want some nugget in here. Because I want these edges a bit darker. And you can add even more colours if you want to. It's just I um I, I thought it would be fun just to pull in the colours that we've already used. I thought it would make sense. Okay, going over that with May Green. Up here, May Green. It's a good base for most of it, the May Green. And then we'll go back with our nugget and darpen, darken that up. There we are. And then our <laughs> chromium green opaque. little bit of yellow ochre or we'll lift that back to our darker green whatever it's called just need to sort this patch out and okay so let's try a little bit more may green here in there as we go towards our mousy that bit's annoying me because it's just not blending out well I'm gonna get my I'm just gonna get my Karen Dash blender let's make sure it's clean and I'm just gonna There's a couple of lines in there that are bugging me, so I'm just going to blend that through. That's better. There we go. This is the Caran Dash blending stick. I don't think they make them anymore. Caran Dash still do 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 a blender. Um, but I think it's more of a pencil form. I think the core's the same, though. This is really sort of delicate, this one, on the paper. That's why I like it. Okay. All right, put that back. And then let's take... Um, Let's take a tiny bit of that grass green that we talked about at the beginning. I can use that just to add some tiny spots of even more brightness. Like that. There we go, and then I'm going to go back to our yellow ochre. I don't know if we need to bring any darker greens in around the edge. If we go darker on the edge, that should make the centre look brighter, if you know what I mean. Get that nice yellow in there. Ooh, 
Oh, we've missed this little gap here. Put a bit of that red there. Gap up there, fill that in. Okay, so what have we got now? Let's take a little bit of the um, chrome oxide green <clears throat> and just just a tad, I think. Just going to deepen up just some areas. And that's got more of a bluey colour to it, so that's quite pretty. Down here, we can put that in there. What do you think, folks? Hope you like it. Go back in with our nugget. Oh, checking them at you now. Let's go back in with nugget. really like that combination of um, the green and brown there. It's really good fun just to sit and play and watch it, watch the colours develop. I like it. Okay, I don't want to overdo it. almost like now we've just got a little mouse clearing in the brambles. Okay, get my blender out and then I think that's it folks. go squish that in the paper it changes the vibrancy of things when you um, when you squash the tooth of the paper it becomes the pencil becomes much more vibrant I don't know if you've ever noticed that but it really does. I think it's a wrap folks up here a bit of brown in there all right look at that I love it I think it looks so cute especially with that with our little multicoloured background, our blurry bramble background. I really like it. Look at that. So I hope you've enjoyed it folks. This book is absolutely gorgeous. I would like to try um, softer pencils on it. I thought because it was smooth that the best bet would be Polychromos or Pablos but I actually think it would probably benefit from, well I think the prismas would just look adorable is what I'm saying and they'd probably be a whole lot easier to work with um, or softer pencils, you know wax based ones but it could have just, I mean I've just managed to do the background so it could have just been that I was tired and like I said over sharpened the pencil, I mean they were ex extremely sharp so there we are, I hope you've liked it, I hope you like the picture um, we have got so many books and so much fun coming up ahead. Um, I've got that pile of books that I've been sent, the Clara Markova ones. I've got 
the little enchanted forest cards that I was sent. Um, you know, oh, there's so much. There's so much. It's so exciting. And with Easter coming up, we've got two weeks of school left and then it's the Easter holidays. So I get two weeks off then. So that will be hours and hours of colouring fun. And I can't wait. All right, my beautiful friends, I've rambled on long enough. I will let you go. Enjoy your evening. And I will be back in the next couple of days to bring you some other co colouring and supplies and, well, colouring. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my lovelies, until we meet again in the very near future, take really good care of yourselves. Night-night. Before we get to the...